Let's go ahead and look in the Romer model at the balanced growth path. When we see an increase in alpha, right? Remember this increase in alpha is the percentage of workers engaged in research and development. So that's what alpha is. So if we see an increase in alpha, let's say at time period zero, what's going to happen to, uh, so over time, what's this going to happen to my overall level of output in each time period? So this is in the Romer model. What we need to remember is that the growth rate of y is equal to 1 over 1 minus beta, the growth rate of a, plus there's going to be beta times the growth rate of k, assuming we're not in the steady state. When we're in the steady state, the growth rate of y, let's say when we're in the steady state, is going to be equal to just 1 over 1 minus beta times the growth rate of a, right? Because in the steady state, this is going to be equal to zero. That's the idea is that our capital gets to the steady state. And that was discussed in the Romer model, which you can go back and check out one of those videos. So let's just go ahead right here. I'll make a little dotted line. So that way we're comfortable that this is t equal to zero. I'm gonna take a straight line. If we're in steady state beforehand, we have this straight line looking something like this. And what we can do is we can put um, the slope of this is gonna be that growth rate. So one over one minus beta times uh, the growth rate of A. And just so that way we remember, just as a note, again, you can go back and check this out. The growth rate of A is equal to, in this model, in the model that we're, we're doing, is gonna be chi, which is how productive people are at generating these new ideas, alpha, which is what we're looking at right now, and n bar, which is our overall population. And we're gonna go over changes in all of these in videos here this week. So beforehand, that's the slope. Now, what do we realize? Okay, so there's a few things that we need to make sure that we're very comfortable with here. We're measuring y, right? We're measuring y, and remember that y sub t, right, is going to be equal to our overall output divided by our overall value of n. And remember that my overall level of output, right, output, this depends on people producing goods and services. And remember, the people producing goods and services is that amount of labor that's gone towards producing goods and services. So when this changes, right, when alpha changes, Let's say when alpha increases, when we see an increase in alpha, that means the number of people producing goods and services is going to decline. So right away, my output initially is going to take a hit. So at time period T, we're actually going to see a drop in this growth path. So we are going to see the overall output per per you know person in society declining because there's less people that are working towards producing those goods and services. We're moving people, right? What what we have here, this alpha, is we're moving people away from producing goods and services into producing ideas, engaging them in research and development. But what I realize, right? What you should realize though, is that if I do increase alpha, the growth rate of A is going to increase because alpha is there. And that should make sense. The long run growth should increase if more people are working towards research and development because technology is endogenous. And this is going to increase the overall production of technology. So what that means is at some point later on, right? So we know that if, if there wasn't a shock, right? I'm going to put some dotted lines here so you can see, no, not drawn perfectly, but that would be if it continued on our initial growth path. What I do know is that somewhere later on, I'm going to get to some sort of, um, let's say, a slope that looks something like this. But the interesting part about all of this is what's going to happen in between. So kind of like this area from here to here. How does it connect, right? Is it a straight line? Is it curved? Is it curved this way? That's going to be the interesting part of this model. 
and let's think about it. Okay, we've got to think about that a little bit. I know that we're going to get there in the long run, but it's going to take some time. And the reason why it's going to take some time is this idea of the change in people working for goods and services. I'm going to take this as a different color over here and note that now, right, my K, remember my capital is equal to, in this case, right, my capital is called P sub T because it's the overall amount of capital in that time period T divided by the amount of workers who are working towards producing goods and services. So if L sub P is going to be declining, then I know my little k is going to increase, meaning it's going to be above that k star. So it's going to move back down. So k is going to actually be declining. So if I come back up here, my growth rate of k is going to be a negative number, whereas my growth rate of a is going to be positive. So it's going to take some time to get back to this new steady state. So that's why this is going to be curved like this. This is going to be convex. It's going up, it's taking some time. So it's gonna take some time before we see those gains. But eventually we will get this one over one minus beta times growth rate. So eventually long run, we will see that there will be a higher growth path and we'll be better off as we start to allocate workers towards research and development.